Well, howdy, we're going to be talking about exposure control, how to get the right exposure with digital. And it's actually the simplest thing in the world. And we're going to teach you in the next few minutes exactly how I do it. First off, all my cameras are set to evaluative metering as the metering pattern. And what that's doing is taking a general reading of the scene with a little more emphasis on the center. You want to make sure that you have blinkies, more formally flashing highlights enabled on your camera. And if you should be photographing too light using too much exposure, the highlight areas will flash black. And that's a warning to you that you need to cut down your exposure, whether you're working in an automatic mode or in manual mode. Now, if you're using raw capture, as we do 100% of the time, you can stand the few blinkies, which are usually easily recovered. The basic trick that people are missing with getting the right exposure is learning to read and evaluate their histograms. You need to look at your histogram, which is divided into five boxes. The dark tones are all the way on the left, and the bright tones or the whites, the highlights, are all the way on the right. And the trick to getting a right exposure with digital is to get some data in the fifth box of the histogram all the time. So here, the very brightest highlights, it's difficult to see, are creeping into that fifth box. And what you want to avoid is having blinkies, especially on the subject. Here's two pictures that offer a great example of creating a test exposure, seeing that you're too dark, and then making an adjustment to move that histogram to the right. For the first image, you'll see that the histogram is well to the left of center, so we're well underexposed. So I knew that I needed to make the exposure lighter. And of course, there are lots of things that go into making an exposure. Now here, you see that the histogram is well to the right. We have clearly data well into the fifth box and a much nicer overall exposure. And what you're doing by pushing your exposure to the right is reducing the amount of digital noise. If you underexpose an image and then open it up in Photoshop, by definition, you're introducing digital noise. Now, it's interesting, I mentioned that there are three parameters that go into controlling the exposure. Everybody knows the aperture and the shutter speed. The one we sometimes forget about is you can use ISO, changes in ISO, to get to the right exposure. So when I was here at a 1250th at 7.1, and I wanted to move the histogram to the right, you'd be amazed to see that I'm still at a 1250th of a second at 7.1. What I did was go from ISO 400 to ISO 800, and that gave me a full stop more of exposure, moved my histogram beautifully to the right, and gave us a good exposure and have a quality image file. In different situations, where the subject might be small in the frame or large in the frame, and the background might be light in tonality or dark in tonality, it's imperative that you learn to work in manual mode. But when you're in situations with potentially changing backgrounds, you might have a crane flying against the light blue sky, against the green of the mountains, or against the darker blue water, it's really a challenge, and you really have to know what you're doing to set the correct compensation. How much easier to have a crane flying by, you start off in aperture value, AV, you make an exposure, you evaluate the histogram, you have data in the fifth box, and you note that the exposure is a two thousandth of a second at F8. Simply set your camera to manual mode, take it out of AV, set the aperture to F8, and the shutter speed to one two thousandth of a second. Now, any crane that flies by, relatively down light angle, within 15 degrees of my shadow on either side, you're going to get the right exposure. And it won't matter if the background is the light blue sky, the tan mountains, or the yellow grass, or the dark blue water. You know your exposure for the crane is a 2000 F8 at a given ISO, and you're going to get a perfect exposure for each image, whatever the background. So if you're scared of manual mode, try my tip. Once you learn to work in manual mode, you'll come up with the right exposure every time. And that's what we're after. So we've been working on this pair of cranes. They mate for life and they hang out together in the winter. And because subject size is relatively constant with the 1.4 teleconverter and the background is uniform, I figured that I would need minus one-third stop exposure compensation to avoid overexposing the cranes. And then 
once I make an image, you see that most of the, the data is in this second box, and that's all the dark grass. Remember, the dark tones are to the left. And then these, this little hump here is the gray. That's the two cranes. And then we have a smattering of data that looks like it ends in the fourth box. And you're saying, well, Artie, you taught us to put data into the fifth box. The problem is that the base of the crane's neck is very, very white. And it's such an insignificant part of the image that you're not going to really see it in the histogram. Uh, I call it the lying histogram, when it looks like it's too far to the left. When you're photographing in the pre-dawn, the sun is obviously not out at full strength. So you're going to need to be adding light to your exposures to move the histogram well to the right. Here's an image of the golden glow with a flock of geese taking off through it with the 70 to 200. And as we scroll through the different views, and my favorite is the one with both the RGB and the luminosity histograms, you see by adding one stop of light to the exposure that the data in the histogram is spread from all the way on the left the dark tones to all the way on the right so that the little mountain ridge here is the darkest area in the frame and those are the tones on the left side of the histogram. And then the brightest highlights, the yellow glow, are all the way on the right. You'll notice even when we look at the full frame image that there are no blinkies. So that's an ideal situation. We have the data spread across from the dark on the left to the highlights on the right with no blinkies. And if you take a really close look, you can see that the red channel, the red histogram channel, is clipped just a bit. And my advice, if people say, oh, I don't want to clip any channel, and they'll underexpose so that the red channel is off the histogram axis, the picture overall is going to be so dark that when they make it usable in Photoshop, they're going to introduce a ton of noise. So when you have these richly colored skies at dawn and at sunset, you want to get in the habit of clipping the red channel a bit so that you don't create an image that's overall too dark. If the sky is soft and the light is soft, you need to add some light. In fact, one last tip. If you're working with gray skies on a totally overcast day, a cloudy day, uh, in the pre-dawn, but not anywhere near the horizon, I'll often read off the sky and add two and a third, two and two thirds, even three stops of light to come up with the right exposure. Well, getting the right exposure is huge important. You could have the greatest thing in the world happen in front of you, and if you blow the exposure, you have no photograph. So we've gone over a bunch of the basics. The key, get some data in the fifth box of the histogram without any blinkies, and you'll be just fine.